Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I am Vince. Today we're recording our podcast in front of a live audience, not in a studio. Hello, everybody. They, they can't respond they because they're on the computer. Yes, that's right. They can't. But I um, through uh, several ideas um, that were thrown to us by our live audience, we have um, come up with a topic. And uh, the topic today is going to be um, comics, because, you know, we never talk about that, and uh, <laughs> how, uh, how comics are currently being sold, and what we think they, that, that Marvel and DC specifically, I, I, just because they're, the, they're the, biggest, the biggest companies, of course, um, what they could be doing to uh, get more readers, to keep the readers they have, uh, to, to uh, keep people reading, to keep people buying, and um, to, uh, to you know, you know, just just make people a, a little bit happier uh, during um, a, a tough time for most, you know, um, companies in, 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 in any field. And um, the the first thing we should talk about, Vince, is price fluctuations. Yeah, you know, there's the thing about it. They're, they're, they jump from two ninety nine to to three ninety nine, and now there's an idea that it might jump up to four ninety nine. When just a month ago they were, um, they dabbled for a minute in talking about bringing it all back down to two ninety nine, but dropping a couple pages out of each book. Mm. Now, what I'd heard, the reason that they were thinking about jumping it up to five ninety nine is for yep. five, four, 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 four ninety nine. No, that'll be next year. Yeah, <laughs> is so that they can uh, try to push this online comics idea a little bit further, especially with the iPad being out. So, oh. Yeah, that's what I heard. Is that uh, what does the iPad have to do with anything? It'd be cheap. Well, you can read comics on it, right? So it'd be cheaper to. They can charge you less to download it, right? Than they can to charge you. To that buy sounds. Book. That sounds a little greedy to me. I mean, you, you, you might as well just uh, charge less already instead of hiking your books up. Yeah. You know your your your, your print books. Um, this all has to do with um, the changing in uh, in technology, changing in trends, and uh, a bad economy. And um, and so you know it's 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 jumping around a lot uh, because they're trying to figure out how to uh, you know keep the money flowing while. Uh, I don't know, Vince. It, 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 it strikes me. It strikes me as odd because um, it doesn't feel like that long ago that comics were ninety nine cents. <laughs> Well, I suppose if ten years isn't particularly long, then it's not really though. I mean, like that is that is huge um, uh, inflation. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Um, okay, let, let's look at this compared to action figures. Um, uh, how, how much? Uh, how much has have the prices of action figures really changed in the last ten years? Some certainly, um, but you know, if you if you go uh, to Walmart and you buy um, a six inch figure, yeah. um, and and uh, they're they're made, you know, you know. We're not talking about DC Direct. We're talking about like Mattel and those those sorts of, of companies. Yeah. And it's just like a normal six inch figure. Uh, back in the nineties, back in the mid nineties, uh, when, when I when I was a kid, I was collecting. Um, you were probably looking at about like six, seven bucks for a normal thing, and then if they had like a deluxe figure, it'd be like ten bucks. Um, now uh, your normal figure is is between ten to twelve bucks, and then they have um, and then they'll have other more complicated things that will get up into more than fifteen twenty dollars. And then you get the um, um, the more limited things, and the DC Direct, and um, and and, uh, and you know the, the Marvel equivalent, and things like that. Um, that'll be more like fifteen twenty bucks, uh, like like normal price. But what I'm saying is that hasn't changed that much. It's only doubled in price. It's not that much. Well, no, no, but I mean seven to ten bucks is not doubled. Hmm. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? I thought you were um, saying it went from five to six. To ten to twelve. No, that's not. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. It went from right. six, six or seven dollars. Hang on, guys. You pay attention. To eleven or twelve dollars <laughs> is what is what I'm saying for like for like for like normal normal toy prices. Um, mm. It seems like what I'm, my my whole point is. It seems like what Marvel and DC are doing with comics is they're just trying to see what their the readers they already have will pay. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, what can we what can we get out of them? Will prices drop or or will uh, numbers drop that much if we up the prices. And I think a lot of the, the, the reason that this kind of thing is happening, Vince, is because, I mean, we can say they're greedy and that kind of stuff, but the business does not bring in the kind of revenue that they wish it, it, it would. It, it, it never has. And I think the idea is they've got about the, the number of readers that they're going to get. There's not a whole lot of, of new people jumping on to comics every day. Um, if movies helped comic book sales, that would be happening. Mm-hmm. And considering um, superheroes have been a huge movie genre... We're not seeing that, um, and we're not seeing that happen. It's never going to happen. So I really think that a lot of what's happening is they're going, okay, we've got people already in comics. Their kids 
when they when we have a new generation, we'll probably also get into comics, maybe. So we'll at least have that for new readers. Um, let's see how high we can hike it, and the, and they and they still and they still buy. Mm-hmm. That's that's my attitude. That's what I think they'd be like. Yeah. The thing that, that, that I just can't get out of my mind is that if they hike up that price too much, people are just going to stop buying. And uh, Yeah. And also... Or just, go to, or, or just go to trades, which a lot of people have already done. Yeah. And you can find a trade on Amazon for a whole lot less than you can, you know, buy an issue for. Yeah. So. Well, especially if you're talking about older stuff, but even, but even new stuff. I mean, um, people generally are not going to balk at $15, $20 prices. Uh, for a trade, when you're talking about you know six issues, especially when you compare it to what the to what the uh, single issues cost. Mm-hmm. I've considered just jumping back on trades because I've been on single issues for a while now. But uh, yeah, it's easier to get on Amazon and buy a trade. Mm-hmm. So now, do you still buy more trades than you buy single issues? Uh, no, not recently. I've been buying a lot of single issues. Yeah, just back issues or uh, some back issues. I've and you have buying, a pull list. Yeah, I've just been buying whatever. Fits my character collections as as arbitrary of a choice as collecting the question and the Punisher are. Oh, whatever floats your boat. I mean, we, we've talked about that. Um, you're a completist. I'm not, and 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 it's interesting with us as, as, a, as a pairing because we collect so differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, at the same time, this affects us a lot because we buy um, because we get single issues. I mean, we, because we get we get we get current stuff. Um, if it went to, what would it take for you to stop buying? Uh, single issues, Vince. That's that's my that's my question to you. I mean, you you stuck on when it went from three to four. Are you going to stick on when it goes to four or five? What happens if it goes five to six? <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Um, where where I, are you going to draw the line? The the trouble for me is it gets up to five to six dollars. I think I might jump ship because uh, I cannot afford to have you know. It's it's hard to say how much money you're willing to spend. At what point does it get beyond living your means I and mean, living beyond your means? You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, absolutely. So, uh, or you just have to cut a whole lot of yeah books out. There'd be certain things that I would have to decide. What is really important to me? Is the Punisher really that important to me? Is uh, is reading the boys really that important? And is it really that important to get every issue that has a particular character in it? Then suddenly I start thinking, you know, back issues are often found in, in dollar and quarter bins. And, right. uh, and maybe instead of... wait. Yeah, I can wait for that five that $5 issue to fall down to, you know, $3. Or, you know, or less. Because it doesn't take very long for back issues to, issues to get cheap. I mean, um, comic collecting is not what it once was. And yeah. comics devalue before they value now. You know, at some point I could just go into a Hastings, you know, travel around, find things in, in used bookstores. Because they exist, Hastings will now take some of their books off their new shelf and put it in their 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 uh, their back issue bin. I don't know why I can't think of the word back issue. We've just said it five <laughs> times. Much like the dollar amount, it's right. all coming together. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, so so my question, Vince, is is what should they be doing? What mm-hmm. should they be doing? Should they should they get to where they eventually just stop making single issues and only make trades? Like, is that the answer to this? Or should they stop making so many books and then drop the prices because they're not making too many issues of things? If, they, if, they, if that makes any sense? Hmm. You see, saying what they should do is a difficult thing. Yeah. Because I could think uh, a new way to get, or ways to get new readers on is a little more of an easy topic than, than what should they do to just keep their old readers. Because the only way that I can think of is, is not jump the prices up so much. Because... Because it's annoying. Well, um, basic basic economics, right? Um, if you drop prices, people are going to buy more if it's something mm-hmm. they want. You know what I mean? Um, if if they were, I just think that that that, that um, they're they're being a little bit too big company minded about this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like if we if we just go, you know what? Our books used to be four bucks. You guys aren't buying enough. Two dollars. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm I'm saying, and I'm not saying they should necessarily half price them, but you know, I think that if they did, people would go nuts. People would go bank gangbusters. They'd be like, comics have not been this cheap in in, in five six years, and um, suddenly I think people who used to read and have stopped and might start reading again, and that and that sort of thing. Um, because yeah. the thing is, they're doing well with trades. They wouldn't have to drop trade prices. Yeah, you know, you jump up the the comic book price, you're going to read less. Because I, I would buy all sorts of like. Just mini series. In fact, here's the deal. 
This is this is for you, comic book companies. Listen up. If I were to <laughs> right, because I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they're paying attention. Yeah, they're not. But <laughs> <laughs> if I were to suddenly have my uh, pull list be dramatically cheaper, I would start buying random titles. Like, well, you try more things out, and yeah. th and that's the problem I have. Um, I think that it's difficult to um really stretch your legs and try new things when you have to spend that much per issue. Yeah. Uh, that, and, and like, I'm a lot more likely to try something that I that I'm not sure I'm going to like in a trade than I am a single issue. Mm. Or borrow it from a library, or borrow it from a person like Vince, <laughs> who, who seems to have all the trades. You know, uh, when I go to Vince's place, uh, I will I will see things that I never would have read. Yeah, but Vince has it, and I can read it for free, so I'll try it out, you know. <laughs> Might buy it later if I like it. You know, that's the thing, is that it'd be worth trying out. Like, I'd like to try out Nemesis. I don't know whether it's good or not. No, I've heard great things about it, but I'm like, ah, but what if it's bad? You but know? if I wasn't spending four bucks an issue, maybe I'd try it. Yeah. So... <laughs> If I was spending five bucks an issue, I wouldn't even try some of the things on my poll. And I think it really hurts the comic book stores also. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really hard for them because, um, you know, you know their, their prices are getting raised just like ours are. You know, they, they have to pay more uh, so that so then we have to pay more. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. not like they can just, you know, keep their keep their prices the same. And so so it's hard. And they're owned by Warner Brothers and Disney, so it's not like they're going to go bankrupt anytime soon. See, yeah, that's the thing. And so I wonder how much of this is desperation and how much of it is... Is um, than just being too big, company minded, feeling they can get away with it. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and keep talking about this, but uh, we'll take uh, questions from our audience and um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll look here a little bit and see what people are saying. And um, <laughs> are feverishly chatting about a zombie Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I'm glad they've been paying attention to this. <laughs> Um, so, you know, lots of people, lots of people here, um, saying that they read trades, um, more than they read single issues, lots of people saying that they go to the library and try stuff out. Um, Vince, how, how, I uh, what would you say the, these days, well, this is a loaded question, I was gonna say, what do you think the, uh, average, uh, comic book reader age is? I think that's hard. Um, but... I think it's around about 25 right now. Yeah. I think it is. But you still have a lot of, like, high school and junior high kids trying to, trying to read comics, trying to get into comics. Mm -hmm. And, um... Like, like, how are those people supposed to supposed to keep in comics? You know what I mean? Like, like, um, Good job. yeah, but, um, but like, how are you gonna pay for that and gas and food yeah. and stuff? You know, you know, just just whatever it is that you have to do for your normal, for your normal life. Um, I don't know. Uh, King asks, uh, "Can't please mention that Marvel will up the comic prices no matter how many people buy them." Do you think that's true? Uh, Do you think, I think that's it's true? possible? Is it just that that that, that Marvel is um, just just really really greedy, money hungry, and they'll do anything they can to, to to get to get your money? I mean, like like I hate to think that way. I hate to even think that way. I mean, King may have a point here because, as you said, they're they're testing the market, saying how much people are willing to spend on comics. They're not necessarily saying we need money. Yeah. And considering that they're owned by Warner Brothers and DC, they're obviously, or Warner Brothers and Disney, rather, mm. they're obviously not uh, hurting for cash, so they're just saying how much they can possibly get out of us. Yeah. I'm not saying that we should treat Marvel and DC as the enemy, I think. Uh, no, I don't think so either. That's not, that, that's, that's not, well, just because um, it's not like nothing they're making is good. Um, and, and I've been saying this for a long time. I think that DC is making a lot more good, you know, Awesome stuff uh, than Marvel is right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, did, I, did I say that DC is making better things than Marvel? Yeah, um, not, not on this one yet. But uh, well, you have now. <laughs> but right before you have said it. Before. Right, uh, but but uh, but that's not to say that Marvel's not doing anything good. Um, I'm reading Avengers right now. I'm reading Fantastic Four right now. Um, I was reading Iron Man, uh, and, and it's, it's quite good. I, I've, I've only dropped it because I want to wait until it goes into trade now because I'm having a hard time keeping up with it month to month. I think that um, it's just too it's a little too dialogue heavy for for, uh, for month to month for me. Um, but but anyway, but there, there is some there is some great. Stuff stuff happening there, um, because it's not like it's not like it's necessarily the writers of the books that have this corporate mindset. Yeah. I mean they're just they're just working. They're they're trying you know, they're trying to be storytellers. <laughs> mm. And sometimes they do what they're told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. Uh, King also says uh, Marvel's coasting on its eighties and nineties fan base, which is a really good point. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean I that's why they have the uh, twenty five year old fans right now. Yeah. It's because they have well, that D 90s fan. And DC has that, too. And I would say that DC does that to a point, uh, because they still they still sometimes uh, go back to things like, you know, the death of Superman and stuff, which people still remember fondly and that kind of stuff.